Okay, in the back of the book is the story of Yeshin, the original Chinese Cinderella. So if you want to pause the video, you can read this. And it actually says that they used to think that it was originally written in Italy, but they were able to figure out that China actually came out with the story of Cinderella um, 800 years before the Italians did. And then here's a historical note. China is a big country, roughly the size of the United States. It has the world's oldest continuous civilization, and Chinese writing has remained virtually unchanged for the past 3,000 years. Until the middle of the 19th century, China was the most powerful country in Asia. The country looked inward and considered itself the center of the world, calling itself Zonggao, which means central country. In 1842, China lost the Opium War. As a result, Britain took over Hong Kong and Kowloon. For about a hundred years afterward, China suffered many humiliating defeats at the hands of all the major industrial powers, including Britain, France, and Japan. Many port cities on China's coasts, such as Tianjin and Shanghai, fell under foreign control. Native Chinese were ruled by foreigners and lived as second-class citizens in their own cities. In 1911, there was a revolution, and the imperial Manchu court in Beijing was abolished. Sun Yat-sen became president and proclaimed China a republic. However, the country broke into fiefdoms ruled by warlords who fought each other for control of China. Chiang Kai-shek, a military general and protege of Sun Yat-sen, took over after Sun's death in 1925. Japan first seized Taiwan from China in 1895. It then usurped Manchuria. In July 1937, Japan declared war on China and quickly occupied Beijing and Tianjin. When I was born in November 1937 in Tianjin, the city was still divided into foreign concessions. However, outside the concessions, the Japanese were in charge. My family lived in the French concession, where we were ruled by French citizens according to French law. My sister and I attended a French missionary school and were taught by French Catholic nuns. On December 7, 1941, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and declared war on the United States and Britain. On the same day, Japanese troops marched into Tianjin's foreign concession. Because my father did not wish to collaborate with the Japanese, he took an assumed name and escaped from Tianjin to Shanghai. We joined him there two years later. In 1945, Japan surrendered and the Second World War was at an end. Chiang Kai-shek was back in charge. His triumph was short-lived because a civil war soon erupted between the nationalists under Chiang and the communists under Mao Zedong. In 1948, during the height of the civil war, my parents took me from Shanghai back to Tianjin to separate me from my aunt, who they said was a bad influence. They abandoned me in a convent school in Tianjin, while they themselves went back to Shanghai and then on to Hong Kong. The communists won the war and drove the nationalists out of mainland China to Taiwan. I was the only student left in my school when the communists took over Tianjin. All the other students had escaped. Luckily, I was rescued by an aunt who took me out of school and brought me to Hong Kong. At that time, Hong Kong was still a British colony and my parents sent me to another Catholic boarding school. They were hoping that the Americans could help Chiang Kai-shek take back mainland China. The Korean War broke out in 1950 pitting North Korea, aided by Communist China and the Soviet Union, against South Korea, aided by the United States. People in Hong Kong were extremely fearful that Communist China would march in from the mainland and occupy Hong Kong. This did not happen. A truce was reached instead, and the Korean War ended. Okay, and here's the author's postscript. So this is the story after the story. I left Hong Kong in August 1952 and went to school in England. My life changed dramatically. I spent three years in two different English boarding schools, then entered University College and London Hospital Medical College. It was a wonderful period of my life. The whole world of science was opening up to me. I could not wait to get to class every morning. Laboratory experiments reminded me of intricate chess games. My opponent was the great unknown, about to be unmasked. Along the way, there were tantalizing clues. I don't know about that. 